Hello and welcome. I want to thank you all for taking the time to view my video today. The subject of today's video is deploying and executing maps using the V2 REST API from Transformation Extender 10.03. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. OK, so onto the demonstration. Here you will see that I have a uh, text session to my Linux box where I have the TX uh, design server running. In this case, it's uh, the four dockers that I've highlighted on screen. So we have uh, TX server Redis, TX server Mongo, TX server, and TX client. Uh, together, these make up the uh, design server. So in the background you will see that I have a browser tab open at the design server. If I just hit refresh there, you can see that it's at the login screen. And I can log in and I can see my project. Okay, my project, project one, consists of a simple map called test one. Uh, this map is a standard map that I use for general testing um, day in, day out. Uh, it's uh, repeating rows of text items. Uh, the function in the output card jumps to a functional map for each row. And then within the functional map, all I'm doing is running the uppercase function on the text item. So basically, any text file I send to this map, uh, the input will be converted to uppercase. OK, so that's my map test one. Um, within Also within the project we have obviously the type trees, uh, my standard generic .mtt type tree. I also defined a flow, but I, I'm not going to be using that today, but I just thought I'd point out that it's there. Test flow 1. Okay, so back to the home page of the design server. And we have this deploy bar here. What else have I defined? I have defined a server group. I have defined a server group called default grp, and we'll just bring up the properties of that. OK, so within this server group, uh, all we have is just a name. Nothing extra, just, just the name of a group. Moving on to the servers, I have one server defined called default. I shall bring up the properties. Um, default, um, it's a web type because I shall be deploying uh, via the REST API. Platform is Linux. Uh, it's within the default GRP group. And then here's the important bit, the base URL that actually defines where it can find that REST API. OK, here's a probably a good point to actually switch over to talking about the REST API instance that I have running. Note the base URL um, is the same IP address as the design server, but the port listed is 8081 instead of the default 8080. Let me switch to my text session here. You will note another Docker running here, tx-rest. Uh, this is version 1003, uh, as is my design server. And the only difference I, I made when installing this was uh, during the um, create phase of the Docker, I listed 8081 as the uh, divert port instead of 8080. What this means is that if I have a browser window open at 8081 forward slash tx dash rest, it gives you a little report just telling you there the version and that it's been up and running for a while now. If I switch to the um, Swagger documentation, you'll see that the V2 API is all there and ready to go. So let's fire up one of these um, APIs. Let's fire up the um, package, uh, list all deployed package um, API. So let's click on the try it out button, change this property to true to see more details and click execute. As you can see, the count of packages I have deployed is currently zero, so I have nothing deployed. OK, we'll switch back to the um, design server now, and um, as I was saying before, this server has been defined with the URL, the base URL, with the IP address and different port number 8081 of my REST instance. Moving on, uh, I don't have any configurable variables defined. I have defined one package. Let's click on that, bring up the properties. Within this package, uh, which I've decided to call package one, um, I've decided to 
pull in elements from project one and from there I've pulled in my map test one uh, I've also pulled in the flow test one but we're, we're not going to be using that today and also the input file that is required uh, if I run the map without passing in any, any uh, overrides which I am actually going to do so we'll come out of that and we'll switch back to the API and we'll actually execute um, actually no first we have to deploy so back to the home page and drop this bar down and let's go for a deploy we're going to deploy it to the default server the package package one hit the deploy button and hopefully we should see all green and deployed successfully that's great okay um, before I execute the map I'm going to re-execute the API that now lists the packages you will note that the count has increased to one and then there's a summary underneath uh, quite a quite a detailed summary of everything that was deployed in package one including the map test one and the input file input.txt okay I'm going to execute that map next but before I do that I'm just going to remove the output file that is created just to show that it gets recreated Okay, so I'm inside the TX REST Docker now. I have a command line session. If I go to the um, TMP folder, you will note that there is a file called output.txt from when I run it earlier. I'm going to remove that file now and show that the file is now gone. Okay, back on the Swagger page, let's find the API that will actually execute that package. Um, I'm going to do a post run a map or flow asynchronously I click the try it out button I add an input I'm going to override one path um, demonstration so I put in the word demonstration and the output I'm not going to override the path to the map um, is just test one the name of the name of the map and I'm going to change application slash JSON back to text and then click execute. Okay, down here it tells me that the map has executed successfully. It gives me um, an ID and an href. Um, if I switch back to my text session, um, you will note that the output.txt file has been recreated. And if we show the content of that file, you'll see it has the word demonstration in capitals. So there we have it, a quick demonstration of running the V2 API under ITX 10.03. Once again, thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it entertaining and informative. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter at PaulBrettIBM to get notifications of new videos.